I'm so happy to be back here at St. John's after being away last weekend for the 4th of July weekend. So I want to thank Father Andrew, who I swapped with last week. He's assigned back at my home parish for serving here. And I want to thank Deacon Max for giving a wonderful message and uh, testimony to his calling as a deacon. We talked about being missionaries in the last three weeks. And I, of course, if, well, if you didn't know, I want to share with you, I got to, to be with my parents as they celebrated their 50th anniversary last weekend. And so I was at St. Augustine's Church where I grew up. And there I, thank you. <laughs> thank you, my mom and dad are watching here. Well, on the occasion of their 50th anniversary, it was my honor there to lead them to renew their vows. In the context of my of home parish where I know a lot of people, I saw a lot of people I grew up with. And I, it was also, most importantly, perhaps especially for my parents, to be with all of my brothers. Very rare that all the Reichland brothers are home together. And in addition, my two little nieces were there. That was the first time they were in Pennsylvania in their life because they live way down in Mississippi. So that's all my mother wanted, all the, the kids to be home. It was a wonderful weekend, and I will cherish it. My parents will cherish it because those are holy moments. They're all too rare sometimes. We feel that way at least. But it was a power there because it was a holy moment. And so in the next several weeks, I'm going to talk about that holy moments. And I invite you to journey with me going through this very simple book by Matthew Kelly. So we, we still have a few copies of it left if you didn't pick one up. You can also order it for free, although you have to pay uh, shipping and handling. I think you can get up to six copies for free. If you want to bring back the book after you've read it to give it to someone else, that would be fine as well. So today I just want to talk about the basic idea what Matthew Kelly says is a holy moment. In the first chapter, he, he calls the chapter awakening. And a holy moment, he simply says, is a single moment where you open yourself up to God. Oh, next week, we'll go into more depth about how Matthew explains what a holy moment is. But just think of it in terms of a moment of clarity where you have a clear insight of God's presence, or a moment of joy where there's just pure happiness and a feeling of joy, or perhaps a moment of peace where you get away from it all. You have that deep abiding sense of the peace of God. Maybe it was when you discovered your passion. You know, you discovered God's purpose for you. Maybe it was when you met your future spouse or you got the ring. Maybe it was a moment of grace where suddenly you felt freedom and sobriety in the midst of an addiction. That's a very powerful holy moment. And perhaps it was the joyful moment of the birth of your first child. We could go on and on. And I, I'm certain that every single one of you have had holy moments. Well, here's the problem. The problem is that we know there are many unholy moments in our life, right? There are moments of hurt and pain. You just got in a fight with a family member, or you are estranged from a certain person that you love. Perhaps you have a chronic illness that's so debilitating. Perhaps it's because of shame and guilt from past selfishness, from past pride. Perhaps you feel clouded in your judgment about what your next steps are in life. Maybe you're anxious or overwhelmed with worry or fear about a decision you have to make. And those things can all cloud the sense of holiness, of God's presence. So what Matthew Kelly talks about is our longing. Our longing in our hearts for meaning in our life or something more. And this is a challenge for all of us even for me, and I'll say I'm a kind of professional holy moment maker. <laughs> so there was a two-week period in the month of June where I had 
six funerals and three weddings. I was quite overwhelmed, and it took an incredible amount of perseverance and grace for me to stay present to every single one of those events, both happy and very sad. You see, we can get lost in the weeds, can't we? we even if you are good with God and you feel his presence all the time, we can s still be weighed down by the tyranny of the urgent, lost in the forest, for the trees, so to speak. That is, we can't see the path in front of us. So the power of this book, I think, most of all, is Matthew Kelly's acknowledgement that we can choose. We can actually choose holy moments in our life, and we are awakened to them. We have the power of choice to, to see every moment as being potentially holy, even when it doesn't seem so. So how do we do that? Well, today's gospel passage gives us a glimpse of it, how we can begin to awaken to holy moments. So you've probably heard this gospel many times, and it's probably something you've heard at funerals. So let me say a couple things first of all. You don't have to wait until you're dead or you're close to death in order to hear Jesus say to you, come to me. He wants you to hear that all the time. And the second thing is, it's important to read this passage in the context. So in the context of Matthew's story, Matthew's narrative of Jesus and his journey, he has just been visiting and announcing the good news to various towns and villages in Galilee. He and his disciples. We heard in the last three weeks Jesus' missionary speech to his disciples, going to heal, to teach, to preach, to free people from demons, to raise the dead, announcing the kingdom of God. Well, it turns out that he found opposition. His disciples as well found opposition in town that were unrepentant and disbelieving. And so we can relate because we want to share our faith sometimes and experience holy moments. Other people in our life may resist that and they may be unbelieving. So notice at one point then here, Jesus does this. He turns to prayer and he says, I give you praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. That's an important reminder that when we're overwhelmed, when we're frustrated, when we feel alone, it's an opportunity to turn to God in prayer. If you're stuck in the weeds, stop and pray. Pray in praise and gratitude for the giver of all good things. God wants us to experience him, and our pride, our arrogance, our frustration can stop us from experiencing these holy moments at time, just simply the time, the, the recognition, the turn to him, and, and to pray to him. But God reveals himself to the little ones, to the childlike, not the childish, but the childlike. That is, those who are like children in their disposition, humble, docile, dependent on God, open, open to receive his grace. So Jesus then continues in his prayer, and he says, Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. But Jesus doesn't hide the fact that he is connected to God, our Heavenly Father, in a very unique and powerful way. So make no mistake, it's in Christ and in Jesus' name, it's in the grace that he has won for us that God, our Father, is close to us. He's close to us, closer than we often think, that we have knowledge of him and an experience of his presence. So our faith is specific. It's simple, but very specific and concrete. It's about Jesus. A relationship with Jesus Christ is the surest way for you and I to experience holy moments. So then Jesus turns to the crowd. 
He turns to the disciples who are around him. He begins to give them advice. He exhorts them. And I repeat these words to people on their deathbeds. As I said, I often read this gospel at funerals. I read it at a funeral this morning, in fact. We don't have to wait until death to experience the impact of these words. Maybe you need to hear these words on a personal level right now. So Jesus says to you personally, come to me. All you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. So there are those of you maybe who are wounded, who are hurt, who are stuck in the weeds, who need to hear Jesus speaking to you. Here's the image. Let me give a little explanation. It's of Jesus as a great teacher, a mentor, master rabbi, and even more than that. So a yoke, a yoke is literally a tool used in agriculture, in farming. It's when two oxen are tied together to bear the load, to bear the plow. They don't just add their strength and force. Their force and strength multiplies with them together yoked. And I, I just learned something new this week that oftentimes in farming, the, the more experienced, mature ox will be yoked with the inexperienced, young, immature, not fully grown ox, so that the older one can teach the younger one to bear the load more effectively. Oh, so that was something I just learned. The Bible uses this image of yoke in two ways, two different metaphors, one negative, one positive. The negative is the yoke of sin, which leads to slavery which leads to submission to evil and sin and death. In addition to that, Jesus cast the yoke of the Pharisees, those who would overburden us with the shame from religious law, the sense of failure that we've fallen short of God because of religious rule-keeping. Jesus is saying, I'm doing something different. Yoke to me. Jesus is saying, Yoke to me as the great, the great purveyor of God's wisdom. Yoke to me to find lightness for your burden, to find freedom, to find redemption, to find a holy moment with him. So my friends, our invitation today is to be awakened, to be awakened to Jesus and his presence, specifically through the power of of holy moments. Come to Jesus. Come to him. Not just at the end, but here and now, in this very moment. Come to him. Be yoked to him as the wise teacher, as our Savior and Redeemer. May your load be lifted. May your exhaustion be taken away. That you and I can experience, even every moment of the day, God's presence, holy moments. So, Matthew Kelly challenges us to see this as a daily activity, as something that we can choose more and more and more. And that's what we're going to look at in the next several weeks, how to more specifically do that in the story of our life. And here's my challenge to you. Simply commit to this four-week series. And it's a very simple book. It will only take you a short while to read it. So... Read this week chapter 1. And you can go ahead and read chapter 2 if you want as well. Awake to the possibility that you can have holy moments and many times in your life and every single day. You see, in Christ being yoked to him, we choose holy moments. So how will you choose? Amen.